Hi everybody, Crazy Eddie here. And we have almost achieved our goal of pure bees. I've gotten down to the last two sets of pairs that I need to uh, breed together. And they have to be bred within a magical biome during a f new moon. Which should be occurring pretty soon. And I happen to know that there is a magical forest biome over this direction. And for no real reason whatsoever, I've decided to walk over there instead of flying. But I have plenty of time until the sun sets and we have another new moon. And it does look as if this could provide me with everything I need to breed my pure bees. I decided to build a whole alveary here instead of just bringing an apiary. So that I could use these little fellows, mutators. When combined with the right fuel, they will greatly increase your chances of getting a mutation. Of course, one problem I've noticed with them is that there are only three possible mutagens. So I think that's been nerfed a little bit because we should also be able to use uranium ore and nether stars. In fact, nether stars can't fail to cause a mutation. Basically, according to the FTB wiki, the chances of causing a mutation with another star is 50 times the normal mutation chance. And with uranium ore, it's 10 times. And with the Eye of Ender, it's just four times. But if we use three of these, then that increases it to 12 times. And since, once the right conditions are met, we have a normal 8% chance of having a mutation, that multiplies out to a 96% chance of getting a mutation the first try. So we may get the whole shebang on the first try. Assuming, of course, that it works the way I think it will. All we have to do is wait for the new moon. And we should still have one more lunar phase to do that. I made sure to give myself enough time. I also need to put slabs on here. All right, there's our new moon. And I have already set up this rejuvenating queen so that she is nocturnal. And we have our mutator set up with their mutagens. And the only thing we're waiting on is for me to put this in here and to put these in here. And it says it has no flowers. Which means I did not quite put it close enough to this node. Another node over there. Let's see how quickly I can move this over.
All right, we got our moved over, ready to mutate, and I don't see how we can get any closer to a node than that. Well, it seems what I've come out with is some rejuvenating drones with the purifying effect. And I did manage to get a couple of half-pure drones into the isolator. So that should hopefully provide me with the species as well. Just in case I need to do some further breeding with that particular species. So all in all, not quite the smashing success I was hoping for, but definitely a success. And I will be cycling these rejuvenating, purifying drones in an alveary once I get them home again. All right, now that I'm back home and I have gotten these purifying, rejuvenating fellows set up, and before long, hopefully, I will have a pure species isolated out. and sequenced so I can change these purifying rejuvenating bees into pure bees. But just because I haven't got the species name in there doesn't mean I can't still play with the effect. So I'm going to try something that I've been wanting to try with these bees for a while. It's not the primary reason I wanted to come up with pure bees, but I do think it could be a beneficial effect. So what I'm looking forward to finding out is how well these bees can do at reversing a tainted effect. I've read that they will purify a node, but will they purify land? Would probably help if I can find the tainted node that is causing this taint around here. At least I believe that's the usual assumption, is that tainted land is caused by a tainted node. a node.
and it is tainted. So let's see what effect this has. Meanwhile, over here, it seems that that drone has lived out over half its lifespan and we haven't had an effect on the taint in this biome. And yeah, the purifying effect doesn't seem to have had any effect on the land itself. So let's see how we're doing with this node. See if adding more jars helps. Yes, just took a few minutes, but we now have a pure node burning here. We'll come back later and see what kind of effect it's had on the land. Okay, so here's what I've been able to observe. Pure bees do in fact change nodes into pure nodes, even if they're already tainted. And they do have some effect on the la local landscape, but not as much as a pure node. And probably not as much as a mana bloom. And you would probably need a lot of drones to convert this whole area back into its natural biome. Almost certainly more than it would be worth, as opposed to other methods. Okay, so now that we've finished that bit of experimentation, it's time to address the reason that we started work on the pure drones in the first place. Take it, please. You see, most people, when they set out to tame a hungry node, go with tainting it to make it safe to handle. But that's not the sort of thing you want really in your base, is it? Also, that's not the crazy Eddie way. Wow, look at that. Over a thousand Terra. And almost a thousand Aqua. Everything else is in the fives or six hundreds, which is, I think is still plenty. So, let's tame ourselves a node.
Well, that answers one question I had. It does change the node normal before it changes it to pure. But that's a lot prettier, I would say. And then all there is to it is just to pick it up and take it home. I should come up with something else for this guy to hold. Just don't know what. Now I have my super node. What exactly am I going to do with it? Now that I have bees that can do recharging, I really don't need to charge a wand off of it. So, I'm thinking about energizing it. Okay, so it seems like all I need to do to restore any of these to their normal state is just turn off the switch on top. And allow it to slowly recover. It also seems that all of these devices can only accept power from one source although they can transmit it to several sources. Which means that we only need to have one node to power all our set to V items. If we arrange our network properly anyway. I nominate this one. And since a node loses all the V that it didn't have when you capture one, we need to recharge this node. The good news is I have just the thing for that. Now these aren't the purifying rejuvenating drones, these are actual rejuvenating drones. Which means they actually have the recharging ability. So now that we've got that fully charged up, we're ready to give a redstone signal to the stabilizer and then take them both off so we can pick this up and move it.
and we'll be moving all of these in turn. Well, the good news is all the nodes were moved successfully. The bad news is most of them were damaged. Actually, all of them were damaged when I turned off the energizer, and some of them were damaged more when I moved them. But I have read that these advanced node stabilizers while they make it really hard for these things to recharge, can still sometimes cure a fading condition. So we're going to give them a while and see if that gets any better. And our Eerie node has now turned into a normal node. Still fading. I could get it pure. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that. That ought to purify it. As for our big node. It doesn't seem to have been damaged at all. And this is where it's going to stay for a while. And there we are, fully energized and all kinds of powerful. I need some more stuff here for this to power. And I bet I could really crank up some wand focuses with this. So, Icorium wand charged in minutes. Your nodes, as far as the eye can see. And of course, the one great big one. All thanks to a bunch of little tiny bees. I'll have to check out what else I can do with them. But I think in the near future, I want to focus on some building.
What am I going to build? I'm not sure. But I'm pretty sure it'll be something cool. So until I figure out just what that is, YouTube, be sure to build something cool, have some fun, and have a nice day.